Hi yarn lovers, this is Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room today in Vancouver, Canada. Normally I uh, record from the corner of my bedroom, but I've migrated out into the living room as you can see. And today is November the 12th, 2019, <laughs> and this is video number 10. I want to say a big thank you to all of those who have just recently subscribed or have been with me from day one. Uh, that is uh, a huge, huge support that I value so much and it encourages me to continue with these video clips that I'm recording from uh, my yarn experiences. And those who have just followed the channel or are new to the channel, uh, please enjoy. I talk about uh, all things crocheted and all things knitted and in particular today I'm talking about uh, projects that I'm wrapping up for the year. So maybe you're like me, you have a few things on the go at, at the same time and sometimes uh, projects get left in the corner or in a bag somewhere and they they get out, you know they're out of sight they're out of mind but uh, I'm digging through all of my yarn and doing a bit of a, um, a clean through clean up of my workspace and I'm finding all of these unfinished projects so uh, with that I shall talk about one of the projects that I had set for myself a few weeks ago uh, I had knitted up a vest for my husband and he wasn't wearing it very often. So now it's winter and we had the, the discussion about like whether he'd prefer to have it as a sweater and he agreed that a sweater would be better for him to wear. Originally it had the banding on both sides that uh, looked like this one here. So I frogged it back. And it was suggested by one of you brilliant uh, subscribers and knit gurus out there to uh, knit directly, pick up stitches and knit directly from the body, body of the sweater, uh, of the vest. So that's what I'm doing. It's slowly becoming uh, a sweater. This arm is probably a little more than a third of the way through. Uh, so that's project one that I wanna finish before the end of the year. And what I used as well was Peyton's Canadiana in the medium grey mix colorway. It's 100% acrylic and it is uh, medium full weight. Now the other project that I have uh, that I want to complete by the end of the year is one that I'm reconstituting the wool. I've unraveled it from my very first project. It was a scarf that I feature in video number one. I will link that video down below in the description box where I talk about the project and how I didn't match the appropriate needle size with the yarn classification weight. So what I did was I unraveled most of it and I got this ball of yarn. It is Michael's Loops and Thread brand and it's the Charisma category or collection, Charisma collection and the colorway is uh, Mountain Majestic or Mountain Majesty and it's a bulky five weight and it's 100% uh, acrylic. It's variegated so it changes color and uh, this is what I had left of the scarf. As you can tell, it's a very stiff fabric. And in my video, I think about like frogging it back and creating like a basket or a projects bag. But I was looking at this thinking to myself, I want to make, uh, pay homage to this first scarf that I created, so I wanted to keep this panel somehow incorporated in the project. So I came up with the idea of making a lap blanket in a quilt, in, in a, a square quilted uh, fashion. So uh, a series of these 
squares to make the lap blanket. Now I, I probably don't have enough of this wool to uh, complete a full lap blanket because it was only a six uh, foot scarf but I have a lot of uh, yarn in this bulky weight that I want to bust through and I had not uh, any intentions of using it for another project. So I will show you what I explored with uh, this quilted lap blanket. First of all, I tried the same yarn as crochet. But I decided in the end it was pulling away from what I really intended want to do with the project. So I am going to frog this one back. I just wanted to show for a record of what this looks like as crochet. And I'm going to re-knit this with the same smaller needle size uh, than the suggested band that I had done for the original scarf. So I have a little, a little band that I, uh, sorry, a little swatch that I'm continuing to knit up and create. And it uses a 5.5 needle size. Now the band recommended originally, I think at eight millimeter, millimeter size. And I've gone down a lot. That's why I was um, creating such a dense fabric. So I have probably about maybe, I would say all up, not enough for maybe nine or eight or nine swatch squares in the Mountain Majestic colorway. And to pair it with other swatches, I was thinking solids would be great because you would have then a, some place for resting your eye so it's not all the variegated throughout the the pattern work and um, I looked at my stash and I found a lot of the product that uh, I got in a Mary Maxim mystery bag from Mary Maxim their Titan series I got two of these in this yellow gold color there's a colorway number if you're ever inclined to look for this but in my mystery box from mary maxim there were i think 13 skeins of yarn and it was suggested that the market value of all the yarn together was 60 dollars uh I'm not too sure. I haven't um, valued each of the items, but uh, this uh, this mystery box was thirty nine ninety nine at the time that I purchased it online. So that's uh, what I used. I crocheted this swatch up, and I'm gonna perhaps add this to the to the uh, quilt, the lap blanket. Now nothing is set in stone here, like I am still kind of like um, playing around, I'm not sure what I'm going to add to this um, this lap blanket, but I also crocheted up this swatch and these, the, this was uh, created with two yarns held together, they were both medium four classification uh, weight yarns and one was from Paintbox in the colorway Pillar Red, and the other one was uh, Patent's uh, Marl in the colorway Red and Silver. So it has this nice little speckly effect to it. I'm just doing a, a double crochet, uh, double crochet in my swatch work. I even had another Charisma uh, yarn from Michael's Loops and Threads. And this colorway, I believe, was called Nordic. But again, I kind of don't want to use this one, I don't think, because I want to pay the homage to the, to the original scarf. So I'm not sure whether that one will go in. Now, this one here was a purple swatch that I made up 
and it's uh, from loops and threads as well and I'll show you the band it's called the Waterford Big and it is 20% alpaca and 80% acrylic so it's this lovely soft it has a lovely soft feel to it like a almost velvet and I like the color and what I did was I wanted to test how I would st stitch them together so with these two I kind of just um, crocheted through the back I did a single crochet and buttered them up without any framework I don't mind that I think it's okay for now but as I said things can change the plans do uh, creative plans do have uh, a way of evolving another project project three that I want to kind of repurpose by the end of the year is uh, yarn that I got also from Mary Maxim's mystery box and I got two skeins of this worsted weight uh, brown called worsted value Mary Maxim worsted value and this is a cap that didn't quite work out. I followed a tutorial from Bag of Bag of Day. Crystal is the host and the instructor to the tutorial that I'll link down below in the description box. And I had successfully completed twice her chocolate bonbon beanie tutorial. And I got quite ambitious and I thought, I will try to memorize, uh, to, to do the, the beanie and, from memory. So this is what I did. I kind of messed up uh, with my increases. I was meant to stop increasing, but I continued. It's quite a stiff uh, yarn to work with, but has great definition for stitch work. So what I intend to do with this cap is to frog it back to the point where I have the increases and then increase it further for a market bag so it'll be kind of used like in this in this fashion here and put some straps on it and so a general market bag use so that's project number three that i want to get done and also in that uh same yarn i used it for another tutorial um, that I followed from Bag of Day and I believe this one is just called the Beanie so I will link to the description box down below to another one of uh, Crystal's tutorials that I created this this Beanie from and just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about with the the nature of this fiber that I'm using the acrylic from worsted value is that in crystals example she uses a yarn that gives a little bit more uh, stretch in her ribbing so she suggested to uh, do 60 rows of this ribbing for the brim when I did 60 rows I could barely fit it on my head and there was no give to it at all so it was quite an uncomfortable fit so I ended up having to do 70 uh, rows in the ribbing give there was no give in it but it fitted my head uh, perfectly and you can tell that it's sort of like a very dense fabric because it stands up on its own um, but again it shows great stitch work definition and um, I like this hat. I, I think I'm going to give this one away. I do like it and it might, may even soften up a little bit in a wash. The so, other two hats that I completed are from patterns that I had found on Rivalry. One is a paid pattern and the other one is a free pattern. This is the paid pattern here called the Bam Beanie and I will link that pattern. It's from Tin Can Knits to the description box as well and 
in the, that yarn, I use both uh, Lime Brands Heartland in the Callaway Glacier Bay and Hobium purchased yarn called the Gazelle XL Baby. And I won't recite the colorway number. It doesn't have a colorway name because Hopium are restructuring or their international online uh, shop is, is, uh, is closing on the November 13th. And I think that they will be coming back. I have a sneaking suspicion or my intuition tells me they're doing something behind the scenes for a little bit, but they'll be back. So that green and that blue, so that make that little tree motif. Another great Christmas present. And the other one that I finished was also in the Heartland Glacier Bay colorway with the stars in Red Heart uh, Chic Sheep Mimosa colorway and this one's 100% wool. So those are those two and this one here I will link down the pattern as well it's called the Norwegian ear flap uh, hat and with all of my uh, worked up hats that I used from that pattern I did not put the triangular ear flaps on the, the, the hats I had finished them all in the in this ribbing which brings me to a very important uh, thank you that I must send out uh, it was brought to my attention by a new subscriber that uh, I had been given a shout out uh, by Laurel from The Dabbling Hook. I was absolutely beside myself with excitement and very humbled. If you have not seen The Dabbling Hook, Laurel is the host and she's a brilliantly crafty individual who knits and crochets and she has many, many patterns that you can purchase from One of her uh, social networking. I think it might be on Etsy. Um, but if you haven't visited her channel, please do stop by The Dabbling Hook. I am so thankful for her shout out. Um, excited, humbled. It's amazing, this little community uh, across the globe that we have. And I'm so thankful to be noticed, <laughs> to be honest, um, by someone as talented and well-known in the community as Laurel. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So that concludes what I have to show you and hopefully that these projects do get off my plate by the end of the year and I start the new year off on a clean slate. I will say goodbye and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.